Hello everyone, welcome to the Weekly Coffee Drinkers. Today we're going to review Evil Dead Rise. Spoilers ahead. I want to start off by saying that I really enjoyed this film. I think it's a great addition. It felt like it was part of the franchise and it added something new that the 2013 film missed out on. I've been a fan of the Evil Dead franchise for a while. My favorites are Evil Dead 2 and the show Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Raimi is a great horror director and he has a unique style that stands out. Each edition he created always had something different, going from horror to dark slapstick comedy, and he wasn't afraid to change the overall setting. The Evil Dead film that came out in 2013 directed by Fed Alvarez has a love-hate relationship with the fans. You either like the film or you hate it. I'm more in the middle. I like the practical effects, there are scenes that are truly terrifying, but I think the issue was that it played a little too safe. It follows the same structure as the original, and I think it tried to take itself a little too seriously. It went for the shock and gore factor, and I felt like there was nothing new. With Evil Dead Rise directed by Lee Cronin, I believe he had a good balance between both director styles. Cronin had the horror, the gore, and I even found myself laughing in a lot of scenes because of the dark comedy and the ridiculousness sprinkled throughout the film. I appreciate that Cronin started the film with a punch. As a viewer, you know right away what the tone of the film is going to be. Seeing the character float out of the water and hover over the waterline with the trees in the background and the Evil Dead Rise title creeps up over the trees is great. Sitting in the seat at the theater, as a fan, I felt and knew this was an Evil Dead movie. From the performances, everyone does a great job. The actress who plays the mother steals the show and it felt like she put her all into it. I also have to say the actress who plays the youngest daughter did a great job too, and I do feel bad for her. They put her through it. She was in a lot of tense and horrifying scenes. Now I'm sure the film crew handled the young actress's scenes correctly so that she wouldn't be traumatized because those practical effects were amazing. They blended the practical and CGI effects very well in this film. When I first saw the trailer and it showed there was a young kid that would be present for a good chunk of the film, I felt like they would have to hold back on the horror, but I was surprised. They went for it. Do I think they could have pushed the horror a little bit harder? Maybe, but I'm not complaining about what I got in the film. In one scene, you have the young daughter looking through a peephole and you see this on the other side. <laughs> to me, this was horrifying. And it wasn't a quick and typical overused jump scare that most films use. This shot lingered and built up the tension, and I really appreciate that. Evil Dead Rise wasn't just overused jump scares. I won't lie, there were jump scares, but there was a good balance. The film did build the tension that led to something scary, and it worked very well. The film did have some pacing issues, a little bit cheesy dialogue, and I think the film could have been a little bit longer. The film is only 1 hour and 36 minutes long. The other thing that this film lacks in is in character development. You find out right away the main character is pregnant and her character is struggling to make the decision if she wants to be a mother, and she goes to her sister for guidance. Her sister, the one who gets possessed, reveals to her that the apartment building is going to be knocked down and she has no idea where they will go to live and how she will support her children. Also, her husband basically left to go get cigarettes and never came back. These elements are good and the audience can relate to these characters. The questions of, do I want to be a parent? Am I capable of being a parent? And then when you do become a parent, you have the fear of how do I parent? And how do I support my family? I like these elements. It's just the film doesn't give it time to develop to the point where the audience would care about these characters. I will say I do appreciate the son being a normal teenager, not thinking things through, and letting his curiosity get the better of him. He is the one who finds the book and the records, and he plays them. Once he realizes he'd made a bad decision, he can't take it back, and he releases the Deadites. I can relate to this. I'm sure all of us can relate to this. Maybe not the part about releasing the Deadites, but we were all curious teenagers. This to me was more believable than basically fully grown college adults finding a book made out of skin, covered in barbed wires, and saying, oh, I should read this. No. No. I think Cronin delivered a good and fresh new addition to the franchise. I hope to see more Evil Dead films by him, he did sprinkle in a potential story for a film that involves priests that find the third Necronomicon book, and I would love to see that. In my opinion, it would be a missed opportunity if they didn't make that film. Overall, I give this film a B plus, and it should be seen at the theater. It's scary, it's gory, it's a little funny, and it has everything the Evil Dead movie should have. So I want to say thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have seen the movie, please let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you, everyone.